1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And when you found it, follow along with me as we begin reading at verse 13. Paul writes, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, meaning those that have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he adds here, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Um, you know, sometimes when people think about the Lord's coming, if they're not a Christian, and, and yet they have some idea that Jesus is going to come again, they're scared to death. But for the Christian, Paul writes, comfort one another with these words. You see, this scripture gives us a picture of what we know to be the rapture and also the resurrection. When the Lord comes, he's going to bring with him our loved ones that we've known long ago who are in Christ. Uh, our parents, loved ones that have died, gone on to be with Jesus. And at the same time, why in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the people like you and I, if it should happen today, are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds <clears throat> to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, those are comforting words. What does this refer to? Uh, it refers to the next major event on God's calendar of time, and I believe that is Jesus Christ's return for his saints. The coming again of Christ. In John chapter 14, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is speaking, and he said, then he spoke about heaven. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And the way I go, ye know. And those of you who know that scripture know that there was a, a doubter standing there. His name was Thomas. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the way for going. He's the truth for knowing. And he is the life for growing throughout all of eternity. Even this life only we had hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. Jesus said, I will come again. Now, I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Each time uh, we, we take a, a Christian body to the cemetery, or even the, the remains of a Christian, we see another picture of the Lord's coming again. Uh, notice here, beginning at verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, like you have today and I do. 
It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Now, I want you to look down uh, at, uh, let me see here. Oh, how about page, uh, 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 verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery, he says. We shall not all sleep. That is, we're not all going to be laying in the grave. Um, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I like that word, changed. Boy, I don't want to be the same way I am now. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. See, that's the real wonderful change that God has for us. Well, uh, when Jesus was with his disciples, he speaks about this time in history. I want you to go over now to Matthew chapter 24 and uh, read just a few verses here, beginning with verse 3. Matthew chapter 24 Get the mark if you don't have these marks in your Bible or write them down on the paper. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered, actually, means, I think this is referring to the end of this age, because the world is still going to be here, but that, uh, this portion of, of God's sent at the end of the world. And, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. They asked him for a sign. And he said, Take heed, let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Notice down there at verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Look at over verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs. We, we think, uh, Pastor Mike talks about this, the, the cults that we have in this world. There are many, many of them. For there shall be false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, if you are one of the very elect, and have entrusted Christ, know him as your Savior, follow him. Why, you won't be deceived with all that business of the world. See, we are living in the most exciting time in, in history, I believe, here in 2019. And not only that, I believe it's one of the most exciting Bible times in history of the Word of God. Uh, there is no doubt that we are living in the last days. Our brother, when he, when he was asking the Lord to bless the offering, he said, Lord, these are the, in the, these are the last days, and they are. Uh, I, I, you know, I never expected to live this long in my life. I came to know the Lord Jesus in 1952. Uh, November 16th, 12 o'clock noon. <laughs> and I never expected to live this long before I heard that trumpet sound and the voice of the archangel and, and Revelation chapter 1, uh, says, come up hither! <laughs> I thought I'd be gone to glory a long time ago. Well, uh, my life's not over yet. <laughs> but there's no doubt that these are the last days. Say, when Jesus was speaking about the signs of the time, he spoke of earthquakes. 
rings a bell. Huh? Uh, these last days, they are intensifying. Earthquakes are now a norm to earth dwellers, especially to Californians. Each time we have an earthquake, know that the return of Christ is imminent. It's, it's, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Bible believers are especially familiar with earthquakes. I want to remind you of something here. Uh, they seem to, uh, to accompany many of the major events surrounding our foundation of faith in God's Word. For, for example, uh, earthquakes have an important, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 27 from them. Earthquakes have an important role in the scene upon Calvary when Jesus, our Savior, was crucified for our sin. Uh, listen, in chapter 27 of Matthew, beginning with verse 50, listen to what he says. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. <laughs> I see him on, on Calvary's cross. The, the very last moment of his life, he yielded up the ghost. He died. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. <laughs> and the rocks rent. The graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints that slept the rose, uh, they came out of the graves after the, his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That's a wonderful study. Uh, I, I sometimes I don't know if Mike has touched on that in his studies, but uh, how precious it is. We don't we don't know what happened to him. Basically, we we know that they they did appear with the saints, but now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous? This, this was the Son of God. What a testimony they had. Three days later, um, we see the glorious event of Christ's resurrection. Go forward a page to uh, Matthew 28. Um, when we see another earthquake. Uh, Matthew 28 and verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear to, uh, of them that... Uh, of the keepers did shake and became as dead men. I, 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 you see, they were standing there. They, what is happening here? The, the stone is rolled away. And, and, uh, uh, and the angel answered and said unto the women, or to the woman, fear, uh, fear not ye, for ye know that ye seek Jesus. For I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. For he, but he is not here. He has... For he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And so, you see, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Uh, we know that to be true. But it was accompanied by an earthquake. Um, most of us have had some experience uh, um, of the helplessness, of the, the, at least a, for a small earthquake anyway. Um, let me ask you, what a show of hands. Did you feel that earthquake Friday evening? Would you put your hand? Most everybody did. Most everybody did. Uh, there in Ridgecrest. How many of you have, th this was the first, first time you ever felt an earthquake? Did I see your hand? Honey? Boy, boy, old earthquakers. <laughs> Were you scared? Maybe just as, maybe just a little bit. The first quake, earthquake I felt, I, I was a Marine in Camp Pendleton, California. I was in the chow line. Uh, well, I was in the chow hall. We'd already, already had our, our 
trays, you know, uh, uh, Brother, you can re re relate to this. How the guys would go through and they'd throw something on your tray and so on. And and uh, right, uh, the last thing they sometimes they throw a piece of pie or a piece of cake or something on there. And uh, in the chow hall, in fact, I had just returned from Korea, and the chow hall was one of my favorite places to be <laughs> because we had some real nice. Cow's milk. It was great. We didn't have this powdered stuff that we had, had been drinking for the last year. All of a sudden, the table started shaking, and uh, when the milk was splashing back and forth, and looked up in the, in, in that big building, the, they had the pipes going back and forth, and they were shaking back and forth, and and uh, why well, some of the men got up and ran out of the place. That was the first earthquake, and I thought, well, it probably isn't going to last very long. So I didn't, th I think I ate three pieces of cake that time, or maybe it was, I, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was pie or what, but I just, the guys left their trays, and I well, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. You, you know, earthquakes are, are, are something that uh, uh, we're used to. Some years ago, when the Silmar quake uh, hit in Fresno. That was in February. No, Silmar, not, not in Fresno, but it was at Silmar. Uh, February 9th, 1971. Ynth uh, and I were, were yet in bed, and believe it or not, I had just hung up the phone. It was five o'clock in the morning. Someone had called and said, Pastor, I wanted to catch you before you leave for today. And I thought, five o'clock in the morning? Well, I just hung it up, and I wasn't sleeping yet. And that thing started rolling. Someone wanted to catch me before I was gone. I'm glad they, I'm glad they reminded me that I was still living. But what a helpless feeling it was to be in that earthquake. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said earthquakes would play a prominent part in the last days. Today, uh, it would be a time known as the beginning of sorrows. That's what we're living in now. It's the beginning of sorrows. We are witnessing things happening in our world, in our country, uh, in our military, uh, not only that, in, 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 our, in our politicians, uh, the whole world is focused uh, on something going to change. But we know the earthquake, uh, they had a big earthquake in Mexico some years ago. And the pictures that we saw on the television were just indescribable. Much worse than that, and I remember in October 17th, 1989, there was an earthquake in San Francisco. And I, I don't know if you remember what was happening that day. It was the World Series. <laughs> I don't know who won the World Series. I know San Francisco was in it. Uh, but uh, but that, a terrible quake and uh, chimneys fell down and... Um, my friend Larry Barnes, and some of you know Larry and his wife Madrine, um, I went up to their place because they lived not ter terribly far uh, from San Francisco, and, and their fireplace had fallen down into the ground. And not only that, all of the people in that community had them. And they said, if you want any used brick, come and get them. So um, Dave and I <laughs> took. Uh, we, we had two. We had two roofers in our church. We, we had brother brother R R R Wrigley. He had his own business, roofer business, and Bob or, or uh, Pete Bentley. He had his own roofing business, and uh, I said, Pete, can we borrow your truck? So he said, Sure. So we we borrowed. Dave and I drove up there, and we loaded up with with used brick. In fact, I've got a lot of used brick around. I come by my house and don't take my bricks away. But uh, but uh, but that was nothing compared to the to the quake that was in Mexico. Uh, 
Oh my goodness. Uh, children were wandering the streets, crying and calling out for their parents, and mothers were sobbing. Hundreds were missing and unaccounted for. And not only that, uh, uh, when, uh, when they started counting numbers, there were 15,000 people wounded, injured. Thousands were dead. 20,000 were homeless. Uh, we may be certain that Jesus is going to come soon. I believe not just here, not, not just in America, but all over the world there are earthquakes and in Italy and uh, uh, different places we, we see that there are earthquakes yet and, and big ones. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know when that time comes that you'll be taken away to be with him? I don't know when it's going to be. Uh, like I say, I never thought I'd live to be a, uh, 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 60 years old. <laughs> no. when, when he comes, every Christian will be lifted up. You might be in church. In fact, it could happen. Well, Lord... You, you might be riding on the freeway uh, when the when the um, earthquake hit the other night. I was talking to my daughter who was on on the freeway. She went to pick up her daughter uh, down at the uh, national or, or the uh, Los Angeles uh, airport. And I said, are you home yet? She says, no, her, her flight was late, so we're on the freeway. I said, then you didn't feel the earthquake. She says, no, I didn't feel anything, Dad. God's people will be taken to heaven. Meanwhile, on the earth, guess what's going to take place? Now, we'll be raptured away. Uh, mingled with the dreadful plagues, there will be a terrible, great thing called the Great Tribulation, and there will be a terrible earthquake, such as was not since the beginning of man. Uh, we've seen only a little. I want you to, uh, if you're in Matthew, I think you should be in Matthew about 28. But look at 24, chapter 24 of Matthew and verse 21. Listen to what the Lord said. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. And he was there because he, he created it all. <laughs> to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Great tribulation is going to come on this earth. But if you are a Christian, I don't believe you'll be here. God is going to snatch you away, first of all. You'll be raptured to be with the Lord. Uh, turn with me, please, to the book of Revelation and see what's happening on the, on the earth at that time. Chapter 6 and verse, verse 12, and I'll, I'll hustle along here. Um, Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Uh, I believe this is going to be earthquake dust along the way. If you uh, over page to chapter 8 and verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it, with fire of the altar, and cast it on into the earth. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and an earthquake. <laughs> See, these days are mentioned, uh, and they, uh, they depict what is going to be happening during that time of the Great Tribulation, which the Lord Jesus said, which was not since the beginning of the world. It could be just around the corner. Do you believe that? I believe with all my heart. I never expected. To, sometimes when something great happens, I say, well, Lord, maybe this is the time. Uh, look at chapter 16 of Revelation. Uh, a couple of verses there, beginning with verse 18. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall descend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name 
were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast and uh, that he was not. Well, that was, I, I was reading <laughs> chapter uh, 17, wasn't I? Sorry, well, that, well, boy, that's, you know, he's going to be there, he's going to be there too. Um, chapter 16 and verse 18. <laughs> and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now, the results of that earthquake are uh, immeasurable. I personally believe that that great earthquake, as I said, there's never been an earthquake like that before, is going to be so powerful that it sets the world, this globe, in a position for the 1,000 year millennial reign. And you know what? I'm going to be here. If you are a Christian, uh, the Lord, chapter 20 of Revelations, that brings us home with him to the world. New bodies! No more cancer. No more heartache. <laughs> Let me mention just one more, if I may. Acts chapter 19, I'm sorry, chapter 1 of Acts and verse 19. Um, we know that when Jesus left this earth, we know that he was going to come back again because he promised that he would. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 1, and verse 9, And when he had spoken these words, while they beheld, he was taken up. Oh, that! what a picture that must have been. The disciples standing there with their mouth hanging open. And uh, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood uh, by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go up into heaven. Now, uh, you say, well, when is that going to take place? Last scripture, promise. Zach is, uh, uh, Zachariah, go back, not very far from where we are, Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4. There's not going to be an earthquake when Jesus goes up to, into heaven. But when he comes back, look out. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. What does that sound like? The Mount, Mount of Olives shall, shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north and half of it toward the south. Sounds like a great earthquake. It takes place when the Lord comes and desires to do his kingdom. And you know what? I'm going to be there. In Revelation chapter 20, uh, that we who are in Christ, first he takes us home to glory. And then he brings us in our new bodies back to the earth again. And when he does, boy, that Mount of Olives is going to split and, and the whole world is going to be changed. Uh, uh, the climate is going to be changed. The animals are going to be changed. The, uh, and and uh, that's going to be 1,000 years of peace. That's what we're looking forward to. You know, the world doesn't know anything about this. Uh, they're scared to death of the times in which we're living. But I'm so thankful that the Christian has something great to look forward to. If you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior, what in heaven's name would you wait for? What on earth? What on earth would you be looking for something else for? 
I believe most everyone here has put their trust and faith in Jesus.